Hey, welcome back to Off The Grid with Bert. Well, here's another acquisition um, coming from a, a fella I know who's starting to offload some of his old equipment. Uh, this is a Robison steam engine, high-speed steam engine, made in Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. It's a generator set. As you can see, it's got quite a large dynamo on it. Sadly, the uh, model plate was missing off it, so I don't really know what uh, capacity the generator is. I'd say more than likely 120 volts, maybe 110. Um, here's the engine. Nice little unit. The side covers are off at the minute because I'm doing a bit of a clean out in the bottom of the sump. It's got a bit of gunk in there. Uh, already done the governor housing or governor and housing up. And it's all back on. Gone with Brunswick Green. It just looks, just suits steam engine so well. Um, yeah. So it was seized when I got it, but I've managed to unseize it. So, uh, yeah, it's just a matter of um, getting it all cleaned up and back together and then it should run. Now, the issue I'm having is I can't find any information about the lubrication system on this engine. Now, it's got a plunger pump down there, which apparently as far as i know seems to push its oil down through the bottom of the engine into galleries that or, or um pathways that are sort of built into the uh the bottom of the engine you can actually see where it comes up if get the thing to focus comes up behind the uh timing gear there and it sucks up through there. It's got a small strainer on there. Um, but yeah, I, I just sort of can't work out how it all works. I know the, the it's pressure lubricated <clears throat> through the big end. Um, and also the, uh, the eccentric for the uh, valve. Um, where things get hazy for me is at this point here now I'm pretty sure there needs to be a pressure gauge in here but what I can't work out is what this is for uh, it looks like it had a pipe soldered into it at some point oh, sorry um, but it also looks like it's broken um, and it was sitting in here when I got it now I can only assume because this just goes straight into the crankcase. It doesn't go anywhere. I can only assume that the pressure gauge, uh, it must have had some sort of pressure bypass or a pressure control in here. And then the excess oil was just simply squirted back in through the top. But yeah, as I, as I said, I can't find any information about, uh, about this engine anywhere. Nothing on Google. Um, even some of the steam club boys don't know much about it. Um, this engine was originally the generator set off the Williamstown cable ferry. Some of the old fellas might remember that uh, that boat. Um, long before the Westgate went in, uh, they used to ferry the cars across uh, using a cable winch uh, type ferry which was steam powered, and this was the generator set off that very ferry. Um, yeah, so it makes it a real piece of history. Something you certainly uh, don't see every day. I mean, I've never seen a Robertson steam engine like this before. It's very similar in design to a Sisson steam engine. Uh, difference being it's uh, a little bit more squared off and angular. Um, yeah, so yeah, if anyone knows anything about this particular engine and how things are supposed to be piped up here, um, that would be much appreciated. 
not sure what this is. I mean, I assume it's a breather slash filler point for oil. Um, sort of has that look to it. Something threaded in there at some point. Possibly a, a breather or you know, some sort of little cap that had, had a breather hole in it. Um, the rest of the governor assembly goes in here. I've already done up the valve. Just got to clean all of this up and get it painted. Get a new gasket underneath that uh, cylinder head. Um, that's the exhaust. It's unusual, the exhaust comes out the top. A lot of these engines, it comes out the side, but yeah, this one's straight up out the top. Which is interesting. Got to get a couple of nuts for there that I'm missing. Um, yeah. Generator looks fairly good. And apparently this, uh, this whole thing was underwater for a period of time in the Maribyrnong River. So after the ferry was discon dis discontinued, it sat in the Maribyrnong for a while. Um, and yeah, apparently the boat, it, it got, a, got a leak in it or the, the, someone wasn't keeping an eye on the bilge and it, the engine room was semi-submerged and unfortunately this engine uh, spent a bit of time in the drink and we all know salt water what it does and you can see where it's sort of rusted in there um, yeah I'm gonna do a little bit of repair work there but uh, yeah I'll probably pull this dynamo apart you know because it's got See if I can get the camera in there. You can see it's got a bit of rust around the armature bars there. Um, corrosion could have got into the copper windings as well. Um, but yeah, I'll I'll stick the uh, the meter on those and see what they're reading. Turns over and everything like it's all free. <laughs> box completely empty as you'd expect uh, that's your drain cocks the oiler I would imagine the oiler on this was a hydrostatic I don't think it uh, it's got nowhere no pulley takeoff so not a mechanical lubricator although you could put one on if you were to uh, you could get a small pulley down in there you could go with a mechanical but i've got a hydrostatic one there somewhere i'll put that on i've been looking for a home for it so this will do the this will do it proud i'm sure anyway hope you enjoy the video just chuck down in the comments if you know anything about this lubrication system and how this is supposed to I mean, it, it, it's, it, would, it would be fairly self-explanatory that a gauge would be there so you could see what your oil pressure is um but yeah i'm not sure if it's supposed to bypass or whether this is just simply another breather and it just has to have a gauge on it i don't know if you know anything about it let me know um and yeah hope to catch you in the next video if you're enjoying the content don't forget to like and subscribe cheers see ya